Hi, I'm Andy Pressman, Agriculture Specialist with NCATS ATRA program, and I am here with Shane LeBrake, who is a farm educator and small farm equipment as well, and we're going to do some routine maintenance on this 1985 Ford tractor. All right. So before we actually go ahead and do some maintenance, neither one of us has ever really worked on this tractor before. This is my first time seeing it. So I want to just quickly do an assessment, figure out some things before we actually get started so we're not frustrated midway getting ourselves into a situation that's hard to get out of. So one of the first things I see here, Andy, is that this screen that's in front of the radiator is caked up with all kinds of dust and debris. And this is interfering with ambient airflow against the radiator that helps cool down the coolant as it comes out of the hot engine. So we definitely want to get this clean. This could, this could lead to overheating of the engine. So we want to clean this out. And there's a lot of other debris down in here. We're going to use the blowgun and our air compressor to clean all this out. So Shane, do you see anything else uh, before we get started here? Yeah, I want to just check this fan belt tension, Andy. Uh, that governs the functioning of the fan, the water pump, the recharge on the alternator. And generally, we want a half inch of deflection on the belt. And boy, this belt looks really loose. Not only loose, it's got some cracking on it. So we're not going to be able to get to this in today's time. But certainly, this is something I want to make a mental note of and let the owner know they need to have this replaced. So in an ideal situation, Andy, I would just try and tighten the belt, increase the tension on it. But as you correctly observed a few moments ago, this has already been pulled to its fullest reach. So there's nowhere to go in terms of tightening this belt any longer. So we're really looking at having to put a new belt on this at some point in the future, ideally soon. And what about access to the engine oil, Shane? Well, from what I can tell you, Andy, we're looking right down here at both the oil fill port to the engine block or where the oil is going to be added, as well as the engine oil dipstick for checking the engine oil level. So I'm going to pull that right now. We don't have any idea what we're looking at here. And this looks like it's right up to full. Uh, and records show this was changed in May of 2018, so about a year and a half ago. And yep, indeed, it's right up to the full mark, but it's over a year, even though the hours aren't great on this in that time, uh, oil degrades over time. So we're gonna go ahead and change that a little bit later, but we see what we've got there, access. And when I'm blowing the radiator clean a little later, I wanna be sure to clean off this area here around the fill port for the oil so we don't get any dirt and debris into the lubrication system while we're adding fresh oil. So Shane, I'm wondering your thoughts on the cooling system here. To me, it looks like it just hasn't uh, had any love for a while. I'm wondering your thoughts on that. Yeah, well, let's take a look. I don't see an overflow reservoir on this. A lot of newer tractors, just like cars and trucks today, have a plastic overflow reservoir that you can just eyeball to see the level of the coolant. Is it low? Is it high? So this is old school. We're going to actually have to open up this radiator cap to check the level of the coolant and see if it's actually even up to where it should be. And to do that, Old school here, I gotta climb up onto this tire to get some height and open this up. I'm opening up the radiator. Now bear in mind, I'm doing this on a cold engine. You would never wanna open this when the engine's hot. And I'm gonna look down into here and see if I can see coolant. And indeed I can. The coolant is up over the level of the, uh, the radiator coil. So, so that looks okay. You know, while I'm doing this, I'd wanna check the condition of this cap. Uh, at some point, this looks original, which is now 34 years old. It's a little rusty on the surface, but it still seems to secure. If that were a weak seal, I'd want to think about replacement. If I were going to change the coolant on this, which should be done every couple of years or a little longer if you're not using the tractor a lot, I would use that as an opportunity to address these coolant hoses here because these all look original to me. So that would be now 34 years old, that's something I would be making mental notes about. Maybe next year or the year after, certainly within two years, draining the coolant, maybe a new cap, new hoses, possibly a thermostat at the same time. Not hard to do, um, just takes a little more time. And when you've got all the coolant drained out, that's the time to do those things. 
Shane, I'm afraid to see what we get into here with the air filter. Well, air intake is really important. Obviously, combustion is fuel and air. So let's see if the air coming into the engine, ooh, engine, ooh, we got some serious dust here too. Um, so there's a lot of dust caked up around the outside of this. Uh, we're going to have to take this wing nut off here and see what looks like underneath where the actual filter is located. You don't want to lose that. And we got a lot of dust here. We'll clean this out a little later more thoroughly. Thank you, Andy. And we've got another big wing nut here. Some systems today don't rely on this. They're a lot easier to remove uh, the filters. But again, we're working on something that today uh, is, is 34 years old. Um, so a little more effort involved. Nothing, nothing serious. Now there may be an internal filter as well, but there's not on this. So we're seeing a lot of accumulation on the filter, a little bit of debris on the outside. And one thing we can do quickly is just take this and tap it on the tires and see if much dust or debris comes out. So I'm not seeing a lot of actual dust inside the filter, but I believe we have a new one and this is a quick job. We'll do that a little later today. Shane, I see quite a few filters here. Yeah, Andy, you're right. There's an engine oil filter down below here. Somebody wrote the hours on it when it was changed the last time. That's kind of gotten blurred and messy. So we're going to do the same when we change the filter. We're going to change that engine oil filter. We have a fuel filter here. We're going to work on uh, that. We're going to change that. And then over here, there's a hydraulic transmission fluid filter. Kind of an unusual place, but that's what that is there. So we have those three filters. And as I look at this, Andy, I see there's a lot of dust and debris built up around these areas that we don't want any of that getting into the areas that we're working on. So before we start any of our work today, we're going to be running the air compressor using the blow gun and we're going to be cleaning all of this stuff away so that nothing gets contaminated in doing the work. And I noticed back here below where the steering wheel is down on the, the case for the hydraulic transmission fluid. And on this particular tractor, this is a dipstick check. And we're going to pull this dipstick up, let it drip down in a little bit, and get a read on the dipstick of the fluid level. Now, hydraulic transmission fluid can be really hard to see on a dipstick. So I'm going to wipe that clean, being careful not to get anything down into this when I do this, because hydraulic transmission fluid is, is really sensitive fluid. It is easily contaminated and that contamination can cause all kinds of problems. So I'm going to recheck just to make sure. And indeed it looks like that's about the level. So this, this is pretty much up to level. And go ahead. And Shane, I've seen on some other tractors different types of ways to check hydraulic fluid besides a dipstick. That's absolutely correct. And on some tractors, they have a sight window. It's a, a little glass window, maybe about half an inch to an inch in diameter. Here's a tractor that has a sight window for checking the hydraulic transmission fluid. And it can be hard to see this, especially if that window has been blurred or damaged or covered up over time and gotten scratched but we're trying to see the level of the hydraulic transmission fluid on this. And if, if uh, we can look carefully, we see that there's a line right about there going across the window, which suggests that this is actually full. If it were way down low like this at a level here, we'd be concerned. But since it's up to here, I feel confident that this has an adequate level of hydraulic transmission fluid in it.
inside out. 